what's going on. So in the video today, I'm really excited because I'm finally getting the chance to review some Parkhurst boots. Let me get started by saying that I've actually been talking to Andrew for quite some time. He is a very nice guy. I've been talking to him behind the scenes for what feels like years now. And actually, I was talking to him when he first got his brand started because I did want to try out his boots. The thing that stopped me from doing it actually was just the overlap. The materials that he had, I already had makeups in, so I wasn't able to jump on anything at the time. But then, out of nowhere, he came out with this home run right here. This is called the Richmond Boot, and it's in a leather that he sourced exclusively himself from the Charles F. Stead Tannery, one of my favorite tanneries, world famous tannery, uh, known for their suede, known for their mohawk, known for their uh, rambler, known for a lot of stuff. And this boot in particular is exclusive to his brand and his brand alone. It's called Ray's Reverse Waxed Mohawk. By my eye, it, it bears a very similar look to my Aldens in Reverse Tobacco Chamois, which is a heavily oiled rough out leather from the Horween Tannery. And um, this to me, now it doesn't smell the same, but it does by, by the feel and by the look, it very much looks the same. It's that really nice, um, rich, dark chocolate brown and it's got a real nice fuzzy texture to it and um, speaking to Mohawk specifically I have two pairs of Truman boots in Mohawk I have the Gobi Mohawk as well as the Moss Waxy Mohawk and this Mohawk actually doesn't appear like the other Mohawks that I have um, this Mohawk is more of like a rough out I would say a heavily oiled heavily waxed rough out I told Andrew too as soon as he posted this, the picture of this boot, I said I had little to no hesitation between seeing the picture and pulling the trigger because first off, he just nailed it with this makeup. So we've got the uh, the Ray's Reverse Wax Mohawk as the upper, and then we've got my favorite, all polished brass eyelets all the way up. Um, no speed hooks. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> you want to talk about Daddy's boots too? What do you think about these boots? They're rough? Are they rough? Yeah. Ooh. You know what animal that's made out of? No. Cow skin. <laughs> as soon as I saw Andrew post the picture of these, I knew that I had to have them. Just because of the texture, the shape, everything about it was just perfectly proportioned. Yeah, not to mention my new Vibergs in natural shell cordovan are also, also on that Ridgeway sole. It's a very cool sole. It's very grippy. It's probably one of the grippiest soles that I have. It's very well designed, I think. Very neat sole. I think I'd like more boots on that sole, actually. It's a nice break from the day-night. I love the day-night, but um, the Ridgeway's a nice break from that. You know what I mean? It's still rubber. It's still got, the, it's still got a lot of traction. Probably the most traction actually. Almost as much traction, if not more, as the Commando Soul. It's got my favorite, the Storm Welt, around the edge there. Polished brass eyelets. It's got that unstructured toe. Very sleek in appearance, but again, very generous feeling on the foot. Surprisingly generous on the foot. Very comfortable last. If I didn't have so many new boots, these would be getting a lot more wear. I love wearing them with my corduroys. Of course, they look great with denim. I think they look probably the best with my uh, chinos and my corduroys because that rough hairy texture that it has going on. So Andrew has a few different boots that he offers. Um, the first one's called the Allen, which is the plain toe. The Allen boot is the plain toe. Then he has the Delaware, which is a brogued cap toe. So all that means is that the cap toe has, has punches or perforations in the cap toe. And then this one, this one's called the Richmond. It's a standard cap toe. And what's cool about this standard is it's got three rows of stitching. It has a double row of stitching at the edge of the cap toe, and then about a centimeter separated from that, there's another row of stitching. This adds more support to the cap toe. I believe all his boots are unstructured. But I will say this about his last. It looks sleek, and that's part of the reason why I didn't hop on it sooner was because of that sleek appearance. As you can see, it's got like sort of that almond-shaped toe, and it, you can follow the, uh, the contour of the stitching from the bottom. It just, it has, it looks like it's more of a trim, sleek, more of a dressy silhouette. And um, that's not always my style, but I will say that as soon as I got it and put them on, for some reason, I don't know what it is about it, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it doesn't feel like a dress boot. It's very generous feeling on the inside despite looking sleek. And I think that's where um, Parkhurst really excels, is that, so like, for example, if you like the look of a sleek dress boot, but you don't like the feel of it, I would say that this gives the appearance 
of a dress boot, but it doesn't feel like a dress boot. It feels like a pair of work boots when it's on my foot. When I'm wearing them, I forget that they're dressier, sleeker looking boots. I feel like when they're on my foot that I'm wearing a very hardy pair of American-made Goodyear welted work boots. That's what they feel like on foot. So as far as sizing, and this is another reason why it sort of makes me hesitate trying out a new brand is the sizing. I never quite know how I'm going to size. Long story short, I'm a size nine in sneakers and dress shoes. I went down a half size, eight and a half in these. It's a perfect fit. I can't wear them with super duper thick socks because that sort of, it causes a little bit of a compression here on my instep. Thin to medium thickness socks feel great. With, with these boots, I would say that they're the same length as the Trumans in the 79 last, and I plan to do a sizing video for, for these Parkhursts as well. As far as the Trumans sizing comparison to Truman boots, I would say that these are the same length, maybe a little bit more narrow compared to the Truman 79 last. Um, Mark Alberts, I would probably take your same Mark Alberts size. Your Red Wing size, I would probably take your same uh, Red Wing size. I would also say that if your Vibergs are well fit, so if your Vibergs 2030 are a well-fit Vyberg 2030, then maybe you want to go up a half size in these because they do seem to run just a little bit small um, compared to the Vibergs 2030. My Alden Indies um, maybe feel just a little bit gen more generous in 8.5 compared to these in 8.5. So, so I will say that like if your Alden Indies are kind of snug, maybe go up a half size in, in your Parkhursts. If your Alden True Balance fits snugly, then I would say maybe go up a half size for Parkhurst. Those are just my initial thoughts on the sizing. I would, I will do a more comprehensive sizing video to sort of compare. But yeah, long story short, I'm an eight and a half in most boots. That seems to be like the sweet spot. There are some boots that I could go down to an eight in, like the Viberg 2030. I think probably the perfect size for me in that would have been an eight as, a pair, as opposed to a eight and a half, which I have. Yeah, eight and a half in this is the perfect fit for me as I wear eight and a half in most boots. I would say whatever boots size that you typically go with that typically fits you the best, I would say that that's also good advice for the Parkhurst last. And it's a great last. Like I said, um, he designed it himself and I actually watched the full interview between him and my friend Dave at Boots of Manish Leather. And it was that was a fantastic interview. I, I want to say it lasted between two and three hours. And Andrew is such a nice guy. Um, I talked to him. He's very responsive. In fact, his personality he, he kind of reminds me of Isaac at, at Pigeon Tree Crafting. He's very thoughtful. He really goes out of his way to ensure customer satisfaction and customer loyalty. And that's where Andrew really excels, in my opinion. Is you know he's a great guy. Really wants to work with his customers. Really wants to form a relationship with his customers. One of these days, I hope to have him on my channel as well, so that. We we can have a real boot talk. Yeah, let me look through some of Parkhurst's current collection because like I said, when I was first talking to Andrew, I really wanted to hop on some of his different makeups and the, and the best thing that I saw that he had at the time was Natural Chrome Excel. And I felt like my Truman Boots and Tuscanello horse rump already kind of checked that box for me. I felt like there might've been a little bit too much overlap there. I know that Chrome Excel and horse rump aren't quite the same thing. From my perspective, they kind of look similar in appearance. So Parkhurst, they ran the Allen boot in Nighthawk, which was a which was a collaboration with Ben at Stitch Down. That was an incredible collaboration. Let's see, Parkhurst also runs the Allen in Spruce Kudu, which is an amazing makeup. One of his most famous ones by far. Let's see, he's also done Brown Chrome Excel. He's done Natural Dublin, Dark Chocolate Kudu. He's done Dune Rough Out. He's done Dark Chocolate Wax Commander. I've also seen him run uh, various types of moose moose hides, like uh, dark brown chocolate moose and natural colored gaucho moose, I believe. So yes, so Andrew has been doing some amazing things. Uh, long story short, I really like these boots. I really like the brand. I really like Andrew's charisma. He's really offering something different in the American Goodyear welted work boot scene. He offers, in my opinion, his boots are very competitively priced. You're getting a hell of a boot for the price. Most of his boots are between 298 and 328. 358, upper 200, lower 300 range, an outstanding value. 
every penny spent on a pair of Parkhurst is is a penny well spent. Absolutely. Long story short, are Parkhurst good? Absolutely. And in fact, I did an unboxing video of these boots. I just got so many comments. There's so many people out there that are just in love with this brand. There's so many people out there that say, yes, these are just my favorite boots. And I, and I can see why. So he's got a very loyal customer base. And it shows. I mean, it shows whenever I post these, like I said in my, in my unboxing video of these, lots of really good reception that um, Parkhurst boots are getting right now and for good reason I would say. So anyways guys I hope I did these boots justice. I will be talking about these a lot more in the future but I just kind of wanted to get my initial thoughts out because I've I have had these for a couple months now and I just kind of wanted to share my initial observations but I'll be doing an update review as time goes on. So uh, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you all learned something. I am on Instagram. You can follow me there. My username is LV, and uh, I will see you all in my next video.